Every day on There's No Taste Like Home, Chef Gino De Campo will take three family cooks and the recipes that have been passed down through their families from generation to generation, out of the home and into a professional kitchen. Come on, let's get cooking. Together, they'll serve up their treasured dishes to paying customers, and the winning dish, judged by Gino, will be added to the restaurant's menu for a month. Remember, this is your great-grandmother's recipes. To prove that there is no taste like home. On today's show, a recipe for mutton hot pot that's over 100 years old and is steeped in literary history. So what is the connection between your family and Beatrix Potter? Well, my granddad's uncle was her shepherd. A traditional Geordie suet pudding that fed the coal miners of the northeast last century. They worked really hard and at the end of the day, I think they needed some really nourishing food and a 70-year-old recipe for a succulent roast leg of lamb that sparks fond memories. Once the lamb is in the oven, it really permeates the whole house. And when I smell that, it always takes me back to her house, you know, all those years ago. Hello, I'm Gino da Campo, and today, yes! I'm in the Lake District. This region was formed by rocks and ice over 500 million years ago. And of course, they produce the finest of the ingredients. Produce such as mountain-reared lamb and mutton, which is the main ingredient of two out of three of today's delicious dishes. And today's cooks, they're using the best of it. But even better than that, they have three amazing family stories to tell. They will be cooking dishes that have been in their families for generations. All this in this beautiful restaurant on the edge of Lake Windermere. Now this fresh air is making me hungry and I want to get into the kitchen and prove that there's no taste like home. Let's meet today's cooks. Andrew Sharp is making Nana Winnie's hot pot. Barbara Beatty is cooking Amelia's leek pudding with minced beef gravy. And Cecilia Campbell is making Grandma Beeritz's roast leg of lamb. Well, guys, welcome to a professional kitchen. How do you feel? Very Excited. good. It's yeah. good, is it? Yeah. It's quite hot, but this is nothing because it's going to get hotter and hotter and hotter. Oh, no. We are probably about four and a half hours away to feed the diners are there. Remember, these people, they're going to come here in the restaurant. They're going to pay for your food. Let's get cooking, OK? All right. All right, let's go. Let's see how our first cook makes their dish at home. Andrew is a 47-year-old butcher from Dalton in Furness. He lives with wife Kasia and two kids, Sosia and Radek. Today, he's cooking his Nana Winnie's hot pot. Andrew can trace the origins of this dish back over four generations of his sheep farming family to his ancestor, Tom Story, who used to herd sheep for Beatrix Potter. What we've got here is, is mutton neck end and mutton breast, which we're going to cook to get rid of some of the fat content. We'll trim it first before we cook it. It's not lamb. What we've got here is Herdwick mutton. My family have probably been involved with Herdwick sheep for quite a few hundreds of years, actually. I'm just taking the, uh, the meaty bits out of this breast. I'm just going to put some water in. Next, we're going to slice up the uh, carrots, potatoes, peel, and get them ready for um, layering the hot pot. There'll be no pressure on me. This this will be um, a doddle. On the day of doing this in a restaurant, we've got a potato peeler, but anyway. <laughs> right, we're going to take the meat off the boil. Doing this in a restaurant environment's no harder. We just have to do some of this job the day before. You'd then put the pot together. She was an interesting character, my grandmother because she had her own motorbike in the 30s. So she was uh, very interesting. Right, we have a, a layer of potatoes on the bottom, carrots, a few onions, some of the meat, same again, until you get to the top. Depends on how big your pot is and how many layers. Right, what we're going to do now is we're going to pop the important secret ingredient, berry black pudding. I think if Gino doesn't like the taste of it, then uh, he hasn't got any taste buds. But I'm just going to put a little bit more salt in. This is our stock that we've boiled the meat in. When we put it in the oven, it's going to be really hot to bring it up to the boil, and then we're going to drop it down to, like, 140. 
Two or three hours would be grand, four or five would be better. And voila. Nice and crisp on the top. Perfect. That's Andrew's Nana Winnie's Hot Pot. Gino wants to find out more about the Beatrix Potter link. So what is the connection between your family and Beatrix Potter? Well, my granddad's uncle was her shepherd. If you look in the, um, the National Trust books of her life story, there's a picture of Uncle Thomas' story. Um, nice. Holding a, a prize-winning tub. She was a great protagonist of the Herdwick Sheep. She was a member of the Herdwick Sheep Breeders Association. So would the Tom Story cook this dish at all? He definitely wouldn't cook it, but he'd definitely eat it. He definitely His wife would have cooked it, I'm sure, but he definitely would have eaten it. Why would he not cook it? Different times, Gino, different <laughs> times, I assure you of that. Tell me, where is the recipe come from? Like the family were sheep farmers, mm. you know, a, a use of, of mutton was normal, so I can remember it from when I can remember. So tell me, how old is this dish? In real terms, it, it went back through the generations. My mum, my mum still makes it, my nana, my great nana, and it probably went on, you know, for a, a long time. A long time. So we're talking about four generations, over 200 years old. The greatest teacher of this recipe was my nana, but she wasn't a very good teacher because you could ask my nana a question, how do you do that, nana? Oh, you just put a few spuds in, well, how much? Just till it looks right, son. <laughs> Did you change the recipe in any way? Have you put any and you twist into the recipe? Oh, no. Have you done anything? No, 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 no Just no. to jack it this, up? This is Lancashire hot pot, not Cumbria tatey pot. Cumberland tatey pot is a different version of Lancashire hot pot. OK. But this is a very, very local dish. Um, and the black pudding as well is something that is part of the dish? Very or? much. My family used to run a trike factory where they did cow stomachs and black pudding and, and stuff like that. What would it mean to you, to your mum, to your nan, you know, to your uh, great-grandmother? What would it mean to your family to, to have a dish on a menu? It'll be fantastic. No, it'll be really good because um, everyone will uh, be happy for that. Because, really, this isn't our recipe. This is thousands of people's recipe. So, for thousands of people, they've got their recipe on the menu. So, this is a community recipe yeah, that absolutely. everybody can yeah. sit on the menu and think, you yeah. know what, finally, is what, you yeah. know, all this hard work that we put in there yeah. is finally paying off. And, and also something that they can understand. They'll know exactly what it is. It's, you can go into the menu and say, I want I that. know exactly. I know, I know exactly what, it, what it's going to taste like, what, what it's yeah. going to look like. Now, Andrew, this is a good tool to have, especially when you have to slice a lot of potato. Have you got one of these at home? Oh, yes. Yeah? Are yeah. you using it? I'm a hell. No? It scares me to death. Very easily you can take your finger off, OK? So the most important thing is make sure you always use it with a finger guard, OK? And many people, they will show you to put a cloth on top. Don't do that. Because this is soft, you will not realise your finger is going to get sliced. So finger guard, the only thing that you have to do, hold your mandolin steady and just go up and down. Like this. See how simple is that? I just made your dish even easier. Andrew gets to work preparing his mutton. He's hoping that his dish will have what it takes to win a place on the restaurant's menu for one month. It's early days, but he seems quietly confident. This dish is a little preparation and a lot of relaxation. One historical dish done, two more to come after the break. Don't you dare go anywhere. Coming up, a dish created from Newcastle's love affair with the leek that's been prized for over 100 years. They were very proud of their leeks, very competitive with that. Oh, there is a beauty competition on a leek. Yes. And a succulent roast leg of lamb recipe from Sweden that's over 70 years old. Once the lamb is in the oven, it really permeates the whole house. And when I smell that, it always takes me back to her house, you know, all those years ago. Welcome back to There's No Taste Like Home. Today, I'm in the Lake District. I found three home cooks who are going to serve up their family dishes here in this restaurant to pay in customer. But only one can be the winner, and the winner will win a place on this restaurant menu for one month. Let's meet our second cook at home. 
Barbara Beatty is a 59-year-old company director and mother of three from Carlisle. Her children, Gemma, Gail and Gareth, have all flown the nest, leaving her faithful companion, Ruby. Today, she's rustling up Amelia's leek pudding with minced beef gravy. This dish dates back to the early 1900s and the coal mining communities of Newcastle. I love making Amelia's leek pudding with minced beef gravy. It's a real northeastern dish. Leeks remind me of, of my childhood, to be honest. Um, a lot of people where I lived used to grow leeks and there were um, leek competitions. People have leek clubs and you would get prizes. I'm just going to start off by chopping the leeks. Even some people would sabotage other people's leeks, so you'd have to guard the leeks and make sure that nobody came along in the dead of night and, uh, you know, dug your leeks up or something. <laughs> so I'm just going to add the leeks into the pan with the oil and butter. It's a very comforting dish, very homely. I think that probably, you know, it's not eaten so much these days because it's suet and you know it's not really what you would call um, the healthy dish but obviously you're not going to eat it every night it's just once in a while. Now I need to start the pastry. I take 200 grams of self-raising flour, add a pinch of table salt and 100 grams of suet and a touch of pepper. And then to that we'll add some cold water to make a dough. So this is looking about right. This is the sort of consistency we're looking for. It's in one piece, but it's not too wet. And then just gently roll it into an oblong shape. So just going to put the leeks onto the pastry. So now I'm going to roll the pudding. And then I'm going to wrap it in this nice clean cloth, not too tightly, so that it can expand as it's cooking. And then I'll just secure the cloth with a safety pin. And then I'm just gonna place the pudding in the steamer for about an hour and a half now. For my mince, I'm just going to pop it into the pan. I cook this until the onion is soft. Add a sprinkling of plain flour. Now I slowly add 500 mils of beef stock and cook gently. It takes about 15 minutes. I think it looks about ready now. I'm just feels firm to touch. Looks cooked just how it should. And there you have it, Northeast food at its finest. That's Barbara's Grandma Amelia's leek pudding with minced beef gravy. Now Gino wants to know the dish's heritage. Now, tell me where this recipe originated from. You know, which part of England does it come from? Yes, well, I'm, I'm from northeast of England, Newcastle. This is a typical Geordie dish. And in that area, they used to have a lot of coal mines. You know, they worked really hard. And at the end of the day, I think they needed some really nourishing, nourishing good, solid good. food because they were very hungry. But they didn't have a lot of money. So they would grow the leeks in their garden or in their allotment. And they were very proud of their leeks, very competitive with that. And then, of course, you only need flour and suet yeah. and you can make a really delicious dish just out of those things. Is it true that they do competition on leeks? Oh, leaks? yes, so, yes. What's the Even competition? Now, Who's got the biggest The uh, biggest, uh, The biggest and most beautiful leek. Ah, oh, there is a beauty competition on a leek. Yes. And, you know, people are very, very proud of their leeks and they wash them and comb the roots. So, how old would you say the recipe has been in your family? Well, my grandmother used to make it. So, grandmother used to make it, yeah. you show it to your mum? Yes. Your mum showed it to your dad? Probably, yes. Now your mum and dad show it to you? Yes. Is it going any further? Well, yes, my children cook So, your children, well. exactly yes. the same recipe? Yes, yes. So, what kind of memory have you got about this dish? Well, it's the sort of dish you would eat in winter. Okay. So, you can imagine a cold, dark night and coming home from school, mm -hmm. coming in from work, and the leek pudding gets made and put in the steamer. 
and it takes about an hour to cook, okay. hour and a half, so the anticipation builds and then the pudding comes out, it looks comes out. wonderful. You unwrap it, and so you have the ceremony of so opening the parcel. So the ceremony, you open everything, all the smell of the leeks coming up. Yes, because leeks do smell wonderful. Oh yeah, I, I love, absolutely love leeks. Yeah. And tell me, when, when, when do you think is the first time you actually made the recipe by yourself? I would say probably when I, just after I was married. I was about 24. So you learned how to cook after you were married? No, I learned to cook before, but I wasn't really interested then so what? much. Till I had a man to cook for. Oh, I uh, see. Ah, see, <laughs> see, everybody, that's how it happens. You get your man first, yes. then you start to think, wait, wait a second, <laughs> what am I going to feed him? Let's learn how to cook. <laughs> yeah. right? Should you not be the other way around to say, let me learn how to cook so I can get more men? No. 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 Okay, no. well, that's, that's, Too busy a, that's a good fun. tip. <laughs> Too busy having fun and yeah. then learn how to cook. What would it mean to you and to your family winning today oh, and having this wonderful. dish? Yeah. On the menu. Yes, be fantastic. Absolutely amazing. They would love it. We want to do this one for Newcastle, for all the Geordies out there. Yes. Yeah, they yes. love leeks. Absolutely. That's what we want to do. Yes. Resurrect the yes. leek pudding <laughs> with yes. meat sauce. Now, I'm going to show you a very simple tip about sweet pastry. Whenever you deal with sweet pastry, make sure your hands are always, always well flowers, yes. okay? So it's easy to handle. A lot of people think that it's difficult, it's sticky. If your hands are, we got plenty of flour, you have no problem whatsoever. Yes, Okay. That's good. At this stage, of course, if you would roll it, you get a rolling pin and you can do whatever you want. Simple as that. Yeah. So definitely what we should do is bring back sweet pastry. I agree. Simple as that. <laughs> Look at that, beautiful. Barbara starts by making her suet. With just three hours to go before service, the pressure is on as our home cooks busily prepare their beloved family dishes for the first time in a professional kitchen. I'm trying to get this uh, bone out now. And there we go. Each cook is hoping that Gino will pick their dish to take pride of place on this restaurant's menu for a month. We've already heard about Andrew and his Nana Winnie's hot pot and Barbara's grandmother Amelia's leek pudding with minced beef gravy. Two amazing dishes done with plenty of history. One more to go. Cecilia Campbell is a 45-year-old journalist who lives with her husband and son Luke in Grasmere. Her family dish is Grandma Beeritz's roast leg of lamb. This succulent dish spans three generations and was first introduced to Cecilia by her grandmother Beeritz whilst growing up in the 1970s in the coastal town of Helsingborg in Sweden. So this is how I make my Grandma Beret's Russian lamb. I cut off most of the fat from the lamb because I need to expose the meat so that the flavours can penetrate. This is hogget. These lambs are not sort of bred for size. They are bred for flavour. And they live a bit longer before they get slaughtered than what's called the fatty lambs that you normally get in a, in a shop. OK, so now I'm going to make the slits to put the garlic in and that'll permeate the meat with garlic flavour. This is just normal paprika, it's not smoked. I don't think there was smoked paprika in Sweden at that time anyway, so this is what we do. And then some salt. Next thing is to chop up the anchovy and parsley. The anchovies is a key ingredient because they give this wonderful saltiness. I love the smell of anchovies, but I mean everybody, well I shouldn't say everybody, but Sweden is a fish country, so we definitely um, we eat a lot of fish. Parsley and dill are like the two main herbs used in Swedish cooking. I think this recipe is probably from, I, I don't know, I would say like early 20th century. I don't really know what the Russian side of it, where that comes from. It just became a favourite in my family. Mix it up with the butter to make a paste. It's so specific, the smell. It, you know, it really takes me straight back to both my grandma's house and the, ho and the house I grew up in. So the last thing that goes on are the tomatoes and the silver skin onions. They add to the flavour of the gravy. Right now, um, in the bottom, we're going to pour uh, some lamb stock. It's really 
crucial that you get the right pinkness. It's not too raw and it's definitely not overcooked. You don't want that. So that's why I'm using a thermometer. So I am going up to 65. It goes into the oven, which is 175 centigrade. After about half an hour to 45 minutes, I take the lamb out of the oven and I baste it with some brandy and white wine and the rest of the lamb stock. So we put it back into the oven. I think it's probably about another hour, I would say, before it's done. When it shows 65 degrees, you take the leg out and you leave it to rest under some tin foil. I always cover it with oven gloves. I don't know why I do that. I do that with chicken as well. I just like to sort of, like for it to feel comfortable. Okay, so I'm gonna uh, now strain this. From the bowl, we spoon the fat off the top. So I heat up the fat, I whisk in the flour, and that's my roux. You add the cooking juices to it. Once the thickness of the gravy is right, I add some cream. That's Cecilia's Grandma Beeritz's roast leg of lamb. A dish with a story as fantastic as it looks. Tell me about the dish, how old it is, and tell me who started this wonderful recipe. Well, I've known it ever since I was little. I mean, I don't know how young I was when I first started eating it, okay. but my grandmother made it. I grew up in a tiny village in the south of Sweden. So we would just, you know, go across for a Sunday lunch or a birthday dinner or something like that. And my grandmother, I, I, what I actually what I remember most about her kitchen is with this recipe especially because it has such a wonderful smell. Once the lamb is in the oven, it really permeates the whole house. And when I smell that, it always takes me back to her house, you know, all those years ago. And it just makes for this wonderful gravy at the end of it. And that's what you want. That and is that's what, what I remember. You, of course. Mashing the potatoes in the gravy. Okay, now uh, let, let's set the scene. I mean, how old do you think this recipe is? Because um, you said your grandmother made it. Yeah. Okay, do you think your great grandmother did it? No, and, uh... I think it came from around the 50s and 60s or somewhere like that. So it's at least about 60, 70 years yeah, old, yeah. this recipe. It's a Scandinavian dish, but yeah. with a Russian twist. We don't really know what the Russian part is. Because I, I was actually going to ask you, what is the Russian twist? I'm today? thinking it's the paprika. Because that is really not something we'd use in Sweden traditionally. Mm. My father, Sverke, he taught me how to cook, basically. He was kind of the weekend cook. He did all the fancy stuff. My poor mother did the weekdays, and she didn't really like cooking that much, I don't think. But he loved it. So and he so, was the one that yeah. was experimenting with yes. flavors. Yes. Well done, Dad. Forever, well done. forever buying cookbooks. So he taught me my favorite recipes when I was a teen, and this was one of them, you know? I've cooked it all over the all place. All over the place. So see, this is a recipe that has traveled a lot, in, yeah. been in your family yeah. for so many years. You cooked this recipe for yeah. family. Uh, friends, yes. dinner parties. Yeah. What about strangers, completely strangers? How do you feel about that? Well, it's quite exciting because I feel very confident about the dish and I've had reactions from people before who had it the first time, you know? And what did they say? What was wow. the reaction? Wow. Oh, my God. <laughs> it, it's that gravy. It's a killer. But uh, so I hope the dish will speak for itself and it'll be interesting to hear what people think of it, obviously. I'm sure it's going to be But now, fantastic. and also, it's lamb here in Cumbria, so it's special for that reason. Everybody will love it. Don't worry about it. I won't. If they don't like it, I'm going to go there with a baguette. Bang! <laughs> on their head, straight away. Because they, they should love a dish like this. I, they should. Now, Cecilia, I'm going to show you a very, very simple tip because you're using a beautiful butter with anchovies in there to flavor your leg of lamb. Yeah. Now, I know that there are going to be a lot of people out there that they absolutely hate anchovies, yeah. okay? So if you hate anchovies, which, by the way, you shouldn't try because they're beautiful, you can just up your leg of lamb with a beautiful fresh rosemary. Have a look at this. Huh? Oh, yeah, that's it's fantastic. Yeah. You see? It's wonderful. You can find rosemary everywhere. But what you do, get a sharp knife and make some cuts into the leg like that, okay? Whatever you fancy. As you did with the garlic, yeah. I'm gonna do exactly the same thing with rosemary. Okay. So then what you do, you get your rosemary, yeah. and it goes straight into the cuts, okay? Like this, like that. So you just push it in, and now you can imagine what's gonna happen. All the flavor of the rosemary is gonna absolutely explode into the lamb. See, the other thing as well, whatever you do, make sure that you never ever use dry rosemary when you do this job. It has to be fresh because the flavor is 10 times better. 
Cecilia is impressed with Gino's tip, but decides to stick to her tried and tested recipe. And the Lovely. job is done. It's only two hours until service and the three home cooks are busy preparing their home cooked dishes, this time for paying customers. Andrew's hot pot is now in the oven and he's still as confident as ever. Perfect. It's dead easy. Barbara has rolled her suet puddings and now puts them onto steam. Only time will tell if they've been a success. I feel a little bit anxious, you know, wondering what could go wrong. And Cecilia has got her lamb in the oven. But a key element of the dish is worrying her. My main concern is that the gravy turns out right. It'll have to involve a bit more tasting and tweaking, I think, than I would normally do at home. So, today's menu is absolutely completed. These dishes have been in their families for generations, but today only one dish can win a place on this restaurant menu for one month. Now remember our cooks, they are amateurs, and they never cooked the dishes in a professional kitchen before. Now they're gonna have to prepare the dishes for hungry diners out there, and I think that they look nervous. I'm nervous, but everything is gonna be okay, don't worry. Coming up, Gino puts the home cooks through their paces. One lamb, one hot pot. Yes, chef. Yes, chef. I need one leek pudding and one leg of lamb. Cecilia? Yes, chef. How long? How many lamb, chef? Eleven lamb. And there's a problem with one of the dishes. Look at this. No, OK. Look All at right. this. Yeah, fine. Welcome back to There's No Taste Like Home. Today, I'm in the Lake District, home of great views and great food. The people of Cambria, they know their mutton from their lamb, so how are they going to rate our home cooks? Very soon, this restaurant is going to be full of paying diners, all hoping to have a great lunch. But while we are waiting for them to arrive, let's remind ourselves what's on the menu today. Andrew Sharp is making Nana Winnie's Hot Pot, a dish spanning four generations with a famous connection. Beatrix Potter's shepherd, Tom Starry, was Grandad's uh, uncle. Barbara Beatty is cooking Amelia's leek pudding with minced beef gravy. This dish dates back to the early 1900s and the coal mining communities of Newcastle. It's just something I remember from my childhood, um, the leeks and the, the lovely smell and the leek pudding. It's a very comforting dish. And Cecilia Campbell is making her Grandma Beiritz's roast leg of lamb, a dish first cooked by her Swedish ancestors over 70 years ago. I think this recipe is probably from, I, I don't know, I would say like early 20th century. It just became a favorite in my family. It's 10 minutes before service and the waitresses are putting the finishing touches to the dining room. Very shortly, over 50 diners will be arriving, all eager to try our home cook's fantastic dishes. Let's hope they live up to expectations. I still have a few things to do, but hopefully it'll be all right. With the hot pot under control, Andrew is still confident about his dish. It's a perfect restaurant meal. It's easy to serve, it's very easy to prepare. So long as it's not seen as, as uh, peasant food, we'll be fine. I'm hoping to get a lovely, perfectly cooked leek pudding, just like my mother used to make. Andrew, what's happening here now? Oh, we're just in the condiment, hot pots in the oven, ready to go. How are you going to do these beetroots? This is pickled. So you're going to be ready, right? Oh, yeah, we are ready now. Yeah, no worry about service, no, no you're problem. Right. You're not going to start to panic on me no. at the end, are you? Yeah, it's right? easy. This is it's easy. Like shelling peas. OK, eh? well, well I'll, I'll let you shell your own peas there. <laughs> Now, Andrew's preparation was very easy. He put everything in a pot, the pot is in the oven. He actually had plenty of time all day to go around, joking with everybody. When it's service time, we're gonna have to be a little bit faster. I don't really want people to joke around. I want the people to serve their dish on the plate. Barbara, yes. what's happening? Yes, thanks. I'm just checking that there's enough water in the steamer so it doesn't burn dry. Are you happy with that? Up. Yes. Have you tasted? Yes. What do you think? I think it's just right. Mm. The only thing I would do, a touch more of black pepper. Thank you. My, ma my concern is maybe the gravy. How are you going to deal with measurement for 50, 60 people? To be honest, I'm winging it right now. I'll probably taste my way to the right, you know. But that's the way to do it. And, yeah. Just a little bit at the time. Remember one very big tip, okay? okay? This is for everybody. You can always add, but it's impossible to take it away. 
Finally, it's time for lunch, and whether our cooks are ready or not, the diners enter the restaurant. I think I'm going to go for the um, Russian leg of lamb. Uh, sounds interesting, we're in Cumbria, but it's Russian, I'll give it a go. quite like the look of the leek pudding and the mince gravy. I said to my sister on the way up, oh, there's hot pot and black pudding, and there is, so the other ones haven't got a run in for me. With service about to start, it's now up to Gino to take on the role of head chef. He must make sure that everything going out of the kitchen is not only cooked properly, but is also beautifully presented. So before anybody orders, each dish must pass his taste test. First up is Andrew's hot pot. Mmm, wow. The mutton is nice and tender, just the way should be. It's cooked well, it's tender. Overall, a beautiful old-fashioned dish that's been in Andrew's family for years and years. The only thing I have to say, I want to see more mutton on the plate. But it's absolutely excellent. Next is Barbara's leek pudding with minced beef gravy. From Newcastle, a proper Geordie dish. Mm. Mm. Spot on. This has got everything that I like about food, about simple food. It's light, yeah. plenty of flavor. I love the um, meat gravy, yeah. you know, it's a little bit different to me. And finally, it's Cecilia's leg of lamb. Well, I have to say, this is a well presented dish. Honestly, when I saw the paprika going around, all those flavors, the butter, I'm expecting more of a one factor. Cecilia, come here. Mm. Have you tried the dish? Yes, I have. What do you think? I think the gravy is not as good as it usually is. No? It's, a, it's usually a lot more intense in flavour. Why is that? Tell because me. the gravy should have a lot more flavour. It usually has a real... It doesn't taste just of lamb. It tastes of the, you know, the anchovies and the tomatoes and the paprika and all that. Maybe what we should do, if you got a, uh, we got some sea salt over there, or yeah. rock salt, yeah. just make sure you put a little bit of seasoning on top of the meat. Okay. Okay, just before it goes out, then the gravy, yeah. and then it will lift up the plate. The diners are about to place their orders, but Cecilia is starting to panic. It, in, 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 you need to lift it up. No more flour in here, no, yeah? Know, because it's very floury. Yeah. Um, we need to get salt and pepper right. Yeah. And uh, um, a little bit run here because it's too thick. Time has run out for Cecilia. By the end of service, Gino will award one dish the honour of being on this restaurant's menu for one month. His decision will look at three main criteria. Cost of ingredients, preparation time in the kitchen, and the reaction of the diners. OK, guys, so service is about to start, OK? We had a lot of fun today. I think the recipe that you showed me so far, they're absolutely beautiful. But now is the time to make sure that the dish that has been in your family for all these years is perfect to go out there for paying customers. Remember, these people are paying, OK, to eat your family dish. Now is when we get serious. The way it's going to work at the pass here is very simple. I'm going to get the ticket with the orders, OK, and I'm going to shout the orders out. What I want you to say to me, yes, Gino, or yes, chef, one of the two. I need to understand that you understood the order, OK? Yes, yes chef. chef. Very good. Off you go to your station. So this is Listen to me. Three hot pots, two yes. leg of lamb, one leek. Yes, yes, chef. yes, chef. One lamb, one hot pot. Yes, chef. One more hot pot, one more leg of lamb. Yes, chef. It's easy to make, easy to serve. It's very, very fast. These are paying customers, yeah, OK? So please make sure that I see more meat on here. Now, Andrew, since this morning, it's been very cold. The problem that I have, we're going to have to be a little bit faster because the diners are going to pay for the dish and it has to be absolutely spot on. Can I have these uh, three hot pot, please? Now, can I have three leeks, Barbara? It's looking really good. Yes, I'm pleased with it. I'm a little bit concerned with Barbara. It's going to be a lot of slicing. Make sure that it looks good on a plate with the gravy around. So can she do it? Barbara, can you see the plate the way it is? Yes. A quarter of this plate completely right. empty. So the way I would do it, putting it in the middle, 
and the gravy all around. Okay, you have to jump to attention. When Gino says one leg put in, it has to be there. Guys, one more check. Andrew, in total, I need four hot pots. Yes, chef. Cecilia, can I have one lamb? Yes, chef. I need two lamb and I need them quickly. What do you want? Do you want something I want else? Tongs. Cecilia, she probably has the art job there because she has to carve the meat as I'm getting the order shouting all the time in the kitchen. You're cutting too thick. You need to do slowly, slowly. Can we salvage those? Not really, no. Hard work getting all the plates out because I've got four different things going on each plate and it's, I, yeah, this is not something I want to be doing for a living, that's for sure. It has to be in the middle of the plate, not on the side of the plate. OK, how long for the pudding, Barbara? One minute, chef. One minute. How long for the lamb? Uh, a minute and a half, chef. Amateur cooks have been done this recipe for years in their house, serving for, for, for probably about four or five people. And all of a sudden, come into a professional kitchen. It's very hot. Orders are going to come through. Now, can I have three leeks, Barbara? Three hot pots. One more hot pot, one more leg of lamb. I'm sure we're going to be right. You know, Cecilia, she's doing a good job. A little bit of seasoning sometimes, it goes a long way. Look at that, it looks beautiful. Thank you. Gino's finally happy with the home cook's presentation. Let's hope the paying diners feel they're getting their money's worth. There you go, thank you. and the leaves. Thank you. There you go. Enjoy wow. your meal. Oh, it smells mm. enormous. Well, first impressions, it looks absolutely stunning, and I'm looking forward to tasting it. it smells fabulous, it smells really good. Lovely, really nice. It looks absolutely marvellous. I love lamb anyway, so my favourite, so I think it'd be lovely. I need one leg pudding and one leg of lamb. Yes, chef. How long? Two seconds. One and two. How long, seriously? Ten seconds. Can I have these uh, three hot pot, please? Give me one lamb quickly and then you finish off the other two. See, this is the beauty of your dish. Simple dish. I need 11 lamb. Yes, chef. OK? <laughs> OK, another order, guys. One more hot pot, one more leek. Yes, chef. Yes, chef. Look at that. Huh? Amateur cooks, the food is absolutely beautiful. What do you think about the food? Very nice. Very Looks good? good? Very yeah? Good. yeah? Good. Table number six. Cecilia? Yes, chef. How long? How many lamb, chef? So we have in total four lamb. Ten seconds, chef. OK, I need three more lamb after this one, yeah? Yes, chef. I'm telling you right now, this portion are getting smaller. But please don't show me that. Look at this. No, OK. Look All at right. this. Yeah, fine. Are you OK? You're not getting too hot, are you? <laughs> yes, chef. Huh? Please try not to faint during service. I've got people out there to feed. We are about halfway through service. I'm just going to check very quickly what's happened out there. In the dining room, Gino bumps into restaurant manager Mark Needham. Mark, how are we doing? Very good. Yeah, yeah. everything's going really well. Yeah, the leg of lamb at the moment is the most okay. popular dish. Hot pot is doing well as well. Leek as well is uh, it's doing still really oh. well, yeah. Okay, so good, good. Well. well, keep bringing the orders into the kitchen. Well, I'm there waiting. We are there waiting for you. <laughs> Satisfied, Gino heads back to the kitchen to check on his home cooks. Guys, just to let you know, I've just been in the dining room. Is uh, You're doing a fantastic job. Plates look nice and empty. People are smiling, so all good. With only a few tables left to order, our cooks are managing to keep up with the hectic pace of running service in a professional kitchen. Uh, you were yeah. a bit panicking about the gravy. Yeah. Have I not said to you a little bit of seasoning? Sometimes yeah. it goes a long way. Three lamb. Yes, chef. One leek, two hot pot. One leg of lamb. Yes, chef. Very good. Slowly, slowly, it's only food. Service is nearly over for our three home cooks and the food seems to be going down well with the diners. All three have been absolutely fantastic, but which one is going to make it on the menu? Coming up. Today's winner of There's No Taste Like Home is... Keep the smile going. Happy Chef makes great food. Chef Gino De Campo is on a mission to prove there's no taste like home. Nice! He's found three home cooks with three historic family recipes. Together, they've taken over a local restaurant in the stunning Lake District. Cecilia has had huge problems with her gravy. The gravy should have a lot more flavour. It usually has a real... It doesn't taste just of lamb, it tastes of the, the, you know, the anchovies and the tomatoes and the paprika and all that. 
But it doesn't seem to have put the diners off as orders are coming in thick and fast. I'm doing so many because apparently this is the most popular dish. Uh, so I hope... I'm one not... leg of lamb. Yes, chef. Give me one lamb quickly and then you finish off the other two. OK. Keep smiling, we're nearly there. Service is coming to a close and the cooks are all hoping Gino will choose their dish as the winner and secure a place on the restaurant's menu for a month. OK, guys, i got the final orders here. I need in total three lamb. Yes, chef. Two hot pots. Yes, chef. And one leg. All right, guys, that was the last order. Well done. Oh, wow. <laughs> All right, so well done. Well done, well done, well done. How did you feel? Yeah, it was, it was good. That was a, definitely a learning experience. Was it good? Did, was it hot? Yes. Yeah, very. No? Was it easy for you? Was it easy? Yeah. The, the, the... <laughs> I thought it was the easiest one. Easy? Yeah, not but... as stressful as yours. No, no, right. Right. Your <laughs> one was difficult. So whatever happened, remember, you are all winners. Because from home, you made it into a professional kitchen. We OK? Yeah. High five. High five. High five, high five. Ah, oh, washing up to do. OK. Yeah. <laughs> Service is now over, and our cooks have done all they can to secure their dish a place on the restaurant's menu for one month. It's now up to the diners, Mark, the restaurant manager, and head chef Andy to help Gino make his difficult decision. The suet pastry was delicious and light, and the leeks were delicious. I thought it was lovely. The, the leeks go very well with the beef. If all gravies were like this, I would have gravy. I would have live on gravy all day long. I thought it was beautiful. We had the hot pot. Very good, very nice, very tasty. It just reminded me of the hot pot sort that my mum used to make. And the leg of lamb is really, really nice. The sauce is beautiful. The lamb, for me, I could taste the flavours. And I was, I was really happy with the lamb. The lamb was very, very good. Praise indeed. It's a tough choice, but Gino's got to make a decision. Will it be Andrew Sharp and his Nana Winnie's Hot Pot? A dish spanning four generations right back to Andrew's great-uncle Tom Story, who used to herd sheep for Beatrix Potter. What would it mean to your family to, to have a dish on a menu? It'll be fantastic. No, it'll be really good, because um, everyone will uh, be happy for that. Because really, this isn't our recipe. This is thousands of people's recipe. Or Barbara Beatty with grandmother Amelia's leek pudding with minced beef gravy. This dish dates back to the early 1900s and the coal mining communities of Newcastle. To win would make me feel very proud to get my family dish on the menu in this lovely hotel restaurant. Or can Cecilia's Grandma Biritz's roast leg of lamb win today? This succulent lamb dish goes back three generations and was first introduced to Cecilia by her grandmother Biritz whilst growing up in the coastal town of Helsingborg in Sweden. It would be great to get Grandma Beard's lamb on the menu. You know, I, I hope she's up there in her heaven looking down today. Gino welcomes the cooks into the restaurant. They're about to find out which heritage dish will win a place on the menu. Well done today. OK, all three of you, you've done a, an amazing job. I know that it's very, very difficult you know, cooking at home and then all of a sudden coming to a professional kitchen. There are over 50 diners here. How do you feel? I feel great, but I'm really tired. You're tired now. Yeah. Well, you dished out a lot of lamb, and uh, do you think you're going to do it again? Not in a restaurant. Not in a restaurant. No. <laughs> Andrew, how did it go? It was easy. Yeah. It was easy? Yeah, yeah. All right, good. The, yeah. the guys, they love the hot pot, which was yeah. very, very good. It's all in the preparation. It's all in the preparation. Absolutely. Barbara? I'm relieved. You're yes, relieved. I am relieved that it all turned out OK. Well, I have to say, uh, all the three dishes, I absolutely love them. Thank all right, very good dishes. Uh, uh, this is probably one of the most difficult ones that I have to choose. I took in consideration a lot of things, uh, the flavours and the, uh, the, the, the way it looks, but unfortunately, it can only be one winner. And today's winner of There's No Taste Like Home is... The Lick Pudding. <laughs> Come here! Oh, thank you so much. I'm so delighted. That is wonderful. You OK? Oh, yeah, OK? Absolutely amazed. Are you amazed? Well, this, this oh. is the winner's plates. Oh. 
Yosono was something different, something that I haven't seen done for many, many years. Well done to Barbara, that's great. I did think mine probably struggled because it was so complex, and that did really work in its favour. I don't think Gino showed us what tastes like home. I think we have. I was shocked, I thought not for one minute that it would win because it's such a simple dish and it didn't get as many orders as the other dishes. They were very popular, but it did taste good. <laughs> What an amazing result for Barbara and her leek pudding. I absolutely loved it. Now, don't forget to join me next time when I'm going to be meeting three more very talented home cooks, all eager to prove that this not taste like home. Well, if you want to try the dish yourself or perhaps you want the details of the recipes featured on today's show, the only thing you've got to do is go to itv.com forward slash food.